What up? Jeff here with all my Bitcoin renegades. And we have so much to talk about tonight. There is a lot happening. Um, the market is starting to recover. It had to blast above 50K. Um, is it going to continue? Did we um, see the bottom? Or are we going to have to go back and touch 42,040 and then be unsure from there? Well, that's what we'll get into. Um, we have a lot of different news. We're going to look at different prices and we have a lot of cool stuff. So the first thing that I want to get into right away, um, we are going to be looking at metaverse. Uh, why did the metaverse coins take such a dive um, tonight? That's what we're going to see. Um, I have a ton of news. I'm not going to tell you all of it because then you could just leave right now. <laughs> but I want you all here. So this is the cool part. Um, why did the metaverse tokens get hit so hard, you know, in this market sell off? So or was this a market sell off? I think this might have been an artificial market sell off, in my opinion. Now, this says, well, the future of the metaverse and gaming tokens looks bright. It is bright. It isn't looking bright. This is the future of gaming. Owning your own items in the game. And the only place you can do that is on the blockchain. Because everything, it's like a ledger, basically. That's why they call it nano ledger. Because it's a, a list of everything that you have stored on a blockchain. So someone can't say, well, I own that. And someone say, well, I own that. And then they say, well, who has the key? Well, I have the key. Well, I don't have the key. So who owns it? The one who has the key. So that's the cool thing about blockchain. You own your items. In normal games, you don't. But why did they get hammered so hard here? Well, that's pretty easy to answer. I mean, if you were just watching crypto lately, the biggest coins that gain the highest and move the fastest are often the ones that retract the hardest and get sold off the quickest. Now, why is that? Well, it's pretty simple if you really think about it. Now, you could use an analogy of like the sun. When it shines on water, it takes longer for the water to get warm. But when it does get warm, it stays warmer for longer. Now, when the sidewalk gets warm, now it gets warm really quick and really fast and really hot, but then it cools off really fast. So that's the same thing with crypto. If it skyrockets, goes up really fast, really far, just that means it's going to cool off really fast, really far. If it goes up slowly and steadily, then when the sell off comes, it's not going to be you know, as bad. I mean, they're all going to, of course, go down, but some of them are going to have, you know, real traction points that stop them from being, you know, sold off like this. It, it's basically um, accumulation. And it's more of like the law of averages too, um, because the average levels are closer together instead of super volatile like this. And in this case, um, all the metaverse tokens went way, 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 way up. So that's my opinion. I'm sure they have a lot more to say about it in here. Um, you know, the whole market was just doing that. So, um, what does it say? Uh, Decentraland, um, is down 25% according to Masari in the last seven days. So it went to 10 bill on November 25th and now sits at um, almost half of that. So that isn't too bad though, because if you think about it, if you were waiting to get in for a good price on mana, because it just went up really fast, just know that this crypto can go up fast again, but it can also go down fast as well or it might not even go back up. We aren't 100% sure what's happening with the market yet. So that's why I want to go in to look at Bitcoin right now. Let's talk about Bitcoin, guys. What is up with Bitcoin? How are you guys doing on your Bitcoin holdings? Are you still diamond handed? Now, let me let me know in the comments or in the likes, actually, since we have three people here uh, or five people here and three likes. Let me know if you guys are still diamond handed on your Bitcoin by pressing that like button. Um, now, if I actually... Well, I can press my one like. There we go. I 
press my like. So actually we have four likes now because I can press one myself. Um, so that's what I did because I'm holding my Bitcoin strong still. And yeah, I lost about, you know, a little bit of, a little bit of dough, but guess what? I gained almost all that back. And, um, I, you know, I can get super negative, but I never get enough to where it affects me selling. And so that's what I want to let you all know that by no means when, um, you know, I'm having a hard time or whatever on my live stream, like I did on that one um, market crashing video. I was just, you know, my channel wasn't doing good. I wasn't doing good. Um, I don't want that to ever scare you into selling off your crypto because I was trying to, at the same time, I'm just like, yeah, I'm doing bad, but I'm going to hold. I'm going to come back from this and we will come back. If I thought it was the end of the market, we would have had a very different discussion. And um, as you see, this 200 day moving average was held strong. Now we blasted above this $50,000 level and that we had so much struggle the last, uh, ever since the dump, trying to get back up to over 50,000. Ever since we went under it, we had a real hard time getting back. We'd go to 49 and then dump all the way back down to like 47, 46 and just have a really hard time. Now I'm going to look at the comments at the same time just so I can kind of, you know, go through the comments because I always feel like if I wait till the end to do the comments, then I miss people that were here and then left. So I don't want to miss none of you guys. Um, so I'm just going to talk a little right now. Uh, man, I love my inner council people. They're just so positive and they I'm bring a smile to my face. So thank you guys for that. Um, Say what's up to Weeping Angel, everybody. She's our inner counsel. Same with King Love, too. Those two are gems. Uh, I don't know what I'd do without them. So shout out to those two. Um, Bitcoin is Bitcoin is dropping baldly. <laughs> um, I don't think <laughs> Bitcoin's going bald yet. Um, it did drop badly, um, but not now. It actually has been holding pretty strong above 50,000 right now. And we're at 50,758. Good. Yes, it did drop the other day um, all the way to 41,806. Now, I was watching this happen. And you know, the one of the other reasons that I was almost certain that we weren't in a bear market right now is because when I watched Bitcoin go to 42,000, you know, this flash wick right here. That's all that was. That was no time. We didn't spend any time at 42. I watched it go from 49 to 41.89 or like 49 to 43 to 49 to 42 something to 49. And it would literally go back $7,000 back and forth. So it didn't just go like 49, 48, 47, 46, 45. And then, you know, all the way down to 42 and then 41 and then kind of just have to go back up from there. No, it was wa-boom, 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 like, a, like a, a jump. So when you have major jumps like that and they, they don't continue to go down, that they're going back and forth and they actually end on the up part of it, that to me is bullish. Or a bottom, I mean, not bullish, but a bottom. You know what I mean? Like uh, a reversal of a bear situation, if you're seeing that. Now, if it would have ended on the 42, and then we would have, I would have been maybe thinking a little bit differently. I might have think, okay, if we get under 40, anything between 30 and 40 could be a bear market now. Because as we saw back here, anything under 30, 40, this was our bear market. Even we went to 45, uh, 500 right here. So basically, Anything under 40,544 is a, a bear market. So 41,000 and below is a bear market. Anything under or anything over is a bull market. That's my opinion. That's not like no fact, but look right where we bounced off of. See that? We tested the bear market. <laughs> the bull market literally came and tested the bear market and said, hey, remember me? Remember, remember me and back down here when everybody thought it was the end and I called it perfectly. I said, no, I, I buy, 
you, I mean, this was like one of the only times that I was ever really not worried about the stupid, not financial advice thing. And I, I, you know, I still did worry about it, of course, but I was like, man, I don't even care if I'm telling you to buy right now at 29,000. We're not done with the bull market. I'm telling you 18 months after the halving is what I was waiting for 18 months ago. That's why I got into crypto in the first place. So that's what I'm trying to tell you guys. When the bull market is over, I'm going to let you know. And I'm going to be, you know, getting out of all of my altcoin positions, putting my Bitcoin into a stable coin and waiting for the bear market to come. And then all of my liquid assets will be purchasing Bitcoin at the bottom or as close to the bottom as I can. Now, is this going to happen in January like all the other years? That's the only thing that I'm not certain of. So you know what I'm going to do? I think I'm going to get rid of all my altcoins in January just to be safe. You don't have to do that. I, do, I don't even know if I would recommend, you know, I, I'm not going to recommend anything, but I think I'm going to get rid of all of them in, you know, the end of January just to be safe. And then if February comes around and, you know, we don't dump, then we might have a prolonged or we'll see. I mean, if we're massively like way high up in January and then February comes and we stay massively up and actually keep going up, you know, then I don't know, maybe it, it'll prolong. But that's when it'll try to trick you guys. That's why I I'd just rather get out and not mess with it, because that's like that's really when the market will whip you. I mean, I've been whipped by the market. You know, you can win sometimes like but you can get whipped, too. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I like my analogies. Um, so I, I try to make it to where everybody can understand it, though. That's why without trying to be like, oh, well, you're stupid. I'm just like, no, how would I understand it best? You know, like and then that's how I tell it to you guys. So I hope it I hope it sinks in because I'm not trying to tell you what to do. I'm not telling you to buy or do anything like I'm just a catalyst that helps you uh, narrow down your research. So you, instead of spending like 10 hours researching, you watch my videos and you only have to spend like an hour or, you know what I mean? Not necessarily that time, you know, but, you know, instead of spending an hour, you, you cut it down to five minutes, stuff like that. <clears throat> I like it when you guys are talking. Oh, Athedos, you're really going to like this episode because I have a lot of news on this one. So I like what he has to say. Many need to understand many things are tied together. Stock market, employment, uh, new places, crypto, and many things tie together. And then when one thing goes bad, that's why we have to look at the whole picture. We look at the entire market and we, in the entire world, the news and our world, how our everyday life and how it affects us like it has the last couple of years, how that, you know, goes towards our financial future and crypto, the adoption of crypto. Now, it can be a double edged sword because, yes, having more people at home and having more people online now because more people have access right now in history to the Internet than I believe any time ever. Your phones are at your fingertips. This is our computer now. Before to get online, you had to go, you remember those things? Sorry about that. But yeah, and now all we have to do is go, my phone's on, right? And so we have access to it. So what better time to adopt a currency that is electronic at our fingertips? So we don't we don't have to go to a bank now. Um, they are trying to, you know, uh, transition us into electronic money. Well, little did they know that cryptocurrency was coming because they liked the debit card idea. They liked the credit card idea, you know, and then they went to um, online only banks where they don't really even have a branch anywhere. It's just online. So now that what did that lead to? crypto. And I know that wasn't all of what he was talking about, but everything now integrates itself in with crypto. 
um, the way the stock market is, the people who have been doing these things for the last 100 years or more, and the families that know how to do this and that are the wealthiest among us all that, you know, are in the middle of all of this, they are going to implement the same practices. These banks are going to do it. Those families are going to do it in the stock market. Those, you know, people who uh, go to school their whole, you know, eight, however long they go to to work on Wall Street, they're going to, you know, use the same tactics of the rich, you know, win and the poor lose eventually. So right now you have the time right now to get in before the majority of the wealthy manipulate the market. You see how it can be manipulated right now? This is only with very few um, people in this. So in the future, when there's big old money in here and where, you know, it's fully adopted by the entire world and countries and governments, and it'll be different then. And so I think it'll be a lot harder for just the average Joe to become a millionaire overnight. Like right now, if you choose the right crypto at the right time and put the right money in and take the money out at the right time, you, you win right now and anybody can do it. That's why I love it. It is an equal opportunity employer. It is basically, you know, you don't have to be the, the brightest, you know, tool in the shed. You don't have to have a master's degree from Harvard to understand crypto and to become rich. Now, are, is everybody going to be rich overnight? Of course not. But um, if everybody was, then nobody would be. But anyway, we have to just look at this. This market correction now is the world getting worse. We have to look at that as well because, of course, the FUD could, even if we were going to blast back up, even if this was a bottom and we we're going to see a V-shaped recovery, if we get some super bad news, it could be lights out still. So we still need to be careful. I still think this is a recovery, but I'm going to kind of sit back and kind of wait. We are, we're basically undersold. Everything says that we're going to reset. Now we just have to sit back and hope that, you know, somehow the floodgates don't break or, you know, mother nature, a volcano goes off that doesn't power our Bitcoin mining <laughs> operations. Um, then we're good to go. Like, I don't think Yellowstone's going to blow. So I think we're okay. <laughs> You know, um, what are you guys saying? How are you guys tonight? Um, I know it's better now. I know you're probably still some of you in the loss, but I really hope that a lot of you were holding Algorand because I've really been advocating for Algorand ever since I started making YouTube videos. I quit, you know, for a little while um, talking about it all the time, but then recently I've really been talking about it. And it was the one crypto that I didn't lose any money on. I actually made money. So I hope you guys did as well um, because I I, um, I do this for you guys as well. And so even when I didn't have money to put in, I was like telling you guys, this is the bottom. If I had money, that's why I was so upset. I'm like, my stomach literally hurt because I didn't have money to put in the market. Like, I'm not joking you. I've never felt like that before. I don't like feeling like that though. I don't like anything having like a physical control of me like that. But I guess it was like more, I think it was my mental state that kind of made me feel sick to my stomach you know what i mean i kind of did it to myself so i think as long as i just stay out of that mindset then it won't have that much control over me next time that's the good thing you don't want to trade ever emotionally or because if it affects you and it makes your stomach hurt you got to take a step back for real because if you trade like that oh you're done so i'm just letting you know that's how i felt but um <laughs> Baldy, nice hair. Yeah, I know. Um, I am getting that widow's peak, but I still have a thick head of hair. Thank God. Because like half my family is bald and half my family has a ton of hair. So it's kind of a flip of the coin with me. <laughs> uh, I'm either going to keep it or I'm not. So, and it looks like I'm winning the race so far. So it is receding a little bit, but I think I'm doing okay. So we'll have to watch it every year, especially if I'm on YouTube videos. You guys will have to like make those uh, image videos. <laughs> Remember, uh, like, uh, I don't know, some of the other people like PewDiePie or other ones do that had their picture every day for like years. And you'll just see my hairline receding back further and further and further until where this spiky stuff is like way back. 
<laughs> I don't think I'm going to spike my hair, though. <laughs> just, I'll probably just shave my head if I go bald. I don't, know. I don't know. I don't think I'll go bald, though. I don't. I just, I don't know. I don't think I will. We'll see. Iodex hitting a dollar. Wow. Okay. Um. Well, let's, I want let, to finish doing these comments and then we'll go um do some more news and then i want to get into some prices too we'll do like one news article one price one new and then that way we can you know have a little bit of stuff for everybody i watched it happen nice so this was very smart of her seeing what she did is she asked us questions but she traded her own way. She asked us for like, you know, kind of what we would do. And then that's why I really like the way that she, I'm talking about weeping angel, uh, the way that she interacts because you can do this too. Just ask like, you know, questions like she does. We can't give you financial advice, but she's like, you know, should I buy right now or whatever, you know, and we can tell you, yeah, just kind of maybe wait a little bit and then make your opportunity. And then she's like, okay, well I'll make, you know, if I see a good, time for me to buy in then i will and then she boom she waited saw a good opportunity bought in not financial advice but she still won and that's that's what we're here to do we're here to help you win you know so let's see that's a perfect example though so uh, i want you to hear what she said i watched it it happened too and remember what y'all said about hitting 50k and wait an hour just before i was about to buy back in it dropped again so i waited a little bit and bought back that was smart. So I've had that happen before and I bought back in and then it dropped and I bought more. That's why I always divide it up as well. That's another way, you know, if you, you think you hit the bottom or if you wait an hour and then you bought in and then it still went down even further. I mean, that can happen too. And luckily that didn't happen with her. Uh, but yeah, you always, I try to split my purchases now. I've always noticed that that's been a really good, you know, even dollar cost averaging in one day. You know, because you can't always tell when the bottom is going to be, you know, so you try to hit that bottom, especially when we have a big dip like this. And then it went right back up pretty quick. And then it kind of hooks over and then goes back down again for you to get in just one last time before we hit, you know, a pump like this. So it's all about strategy and timing those waves because some waves can just V shape and come back and some can V shape and then hook and then just go over and double bottom before bouncing off again. And um, I think we had the, the um, former here. This looks actually like a V-shape recovery, um, but some of them, not on Bitcoin, but I think like on the graph and a couple of the other ones did have that hook, you know, the, the leaning over, kind of like the leaning through Pisa, wishing hook where it just, you know, it's in its circles and then kind of goes back down again before blasting off. So either one of those, even if you bought here the first time it went up and then went back down to that price again, you still just gives you another time to buy in at the same price before. So that's the good thing. You know, sometimes you get two chances to buy. It doesn't mean that buying over here was wrong or buying when it went back down is wrong. Just either of those, they're judgment calls. And that's why that's what you do. You don't use my video to make your trade. You use it to learn how to trade, you know, and then you use it for whatever works best for you. you. If you see a bottom, you know, and then you can do TA too. And you look for a lot of the people that have a good technical analysis. But anyway, let's get to some news, guys. Um, make sure there isn't anything I need. Oh, here's a good one. If ICP drops below $30 again, I'm going to buy more because I know it's never going lower. Man, $30 for ICP is just insane for me. I I have to buy in too, so um, I'm going to. Uh, um, I'm still having problems with my insurance. That's the only reason I have a lot of liquid money. But the last couple of morning I checked, so I'm not working right now on my um, job. So last couple of morning I checked my balance first. When I wake up, I wanted to kind of puke. Yeah, I feel that too. The market is finally green. Yay. Hey, John, good to see you, man. Most of my inner council is over here. I like that, man. Good job, guys. Um, we have a really solid team here. Now, if we can just get some other guys to chat with us, I see there are seven people here. Don't be afraid. Um, you guys, just because we have inner council here, you guys are welcome in our group. 
Like we're all pretty nice. If you hadn't noticed, like you're welcome here. Uh, this is a, a safe place. It's a good place to learn about crypto. If you have questions, don't be afraid to ask any one of us. Even if I'm not around, we have a really good group of inner council that knows a lot about crypto as well. And they can help you. I'm not saying like, you know, uh, be careful because there are scammers out there that will pretend to be me or probably my inner council sometime soon, probably. But, um, you know, just make sure you're not interacting with the wrong person. And um, if, if you want help, make sure you contact like me on an official channel and make sure that you're talking to the right person, because I don't want you ever to have one of these scam artists come out and trick you out of your money. And I'll never ask you for money either. So just know that. If you want to donate to the channel, there's a link in the description to donate Bitcoin or you can do it through BAT or, you know, I'm going to get a charity. That's the one thing I'm I'm looking for good charities, maybe to help children or homeless or homeless children or homeless families um, that I can have on my channel here that um, it can just be a, a positive you know, thing that anybody can always donate, you know, through my channel at any time. And I'm going to look for that. And that's what we're going to have the same one at all times. But just know, we'll never ask you for money or anything, you know, reach out to you. But if you see it on a video, then obviously, you know, it's me saying and you can trust it. But um, yeah, just be careful. I don't want you guys to get scammed because I've I've actually made a video about pretending to be a crypto YouTuber. And I was actually going to try to trick one of them into thinking I was going to send them a full Bitcoin. And they are really irritating to deal with. So I never ended up doing that. Um, just try to stay away from those guys um, because they, they just get mad at you and they're just super hard to deal with. So <clears throat> uh, let's go to some news. Let me make sure that everything is going still. Okay. So news, news, news right here. <clears throat> so Colombia's bank, its largest bank, it taps Gemini to offer Bitcoin Ethereum trading to clients. So it looks like the largest bank in Colombia is partnering with Gemini um, in order to trade for its largest clients. So it looks like um, these banks, are going to end up being in cahoots with the exchanges. This is not good news. If you think about the repercussions of what this means right here. Now, this could be good news for the adoption of crypto in the short term. Yeah, more adoption. Everything is kind of good. If everybody gets into Bitcoin and crypto, that's what we want, right? Well, guys, don't be naive, though. That's the one thing that I want to tell you. When the banks are starting to partner with the exchanges, what does that tell you? There's a transfer of power going on right now or a collaboration of power. And the power that was and the powers that will be are now partnering together. So it's only happening in Colombia for now. But if you see all of these banks um, using Ripple and blockchain technology, there's going to be a massive, massive transfer of wealth and power. And I don't think that, you know, um, we should sit back and just let the banks take it all. I think it's a new generation. I think that, you know, we have a lot of um, good people in crypto that um, have big ideals and big, you know, pocketbooks that will um, fight against this. It's decentralized. That's what's good about crypto, right? And these entities are going to try to centralize, centralize everything. They're going to try to make every exchange centralized. Now, is Gemini a centralized exchange? And if it is, I believe it is, then what does that tell you? They aren't partnering with a decentralized exchange to, you know, maybe switch over to decentralization because they don't want that. They want to be the third party that uh, you trust with your money so that they can invest and make money off of your money. And that's what they want to continue with crypto in the future. They don't want you to invest your own crypto. They're going to want to, you to put your crypto in the bank so that the bank can get your uh, yield farming tokens, so that the bank can get your airdrops, so that the, now we can put this in terms where you understand it, right? It's not bank fees and levies, it's airdrops and, you know, staking bonuses and <laughs> yield farming. 
come on, man, it's stuff we know now, but they're going to try to take that profit for themselves. Now you get what I'm saying? The profit that's ours and we can't let that happen. So decentralization is the way to go. Now, if this bank partnered with Uniswap, that would be good because why? Then it would be a decentralized thing and you wouldn't really have to worry about a bank partnering with a decentralized entity because they wouldn't gain anything out of that. Now, we got to be careful with these entities coming together. And I hope I didn't just give them the idea. <laughs> I'm sure they thought of it before. But, you know, the banks and the, the exchanges are basically the same thing. This is 100 years ago. This is today. Bank, exchange. Are they synonymous with each other? Maybe in the future. Maybe soon. You know, the only thing it is different because you, you have to use your bank in order to, you know, um, send cash to and fro. So they know that now. So when the banks partner with the exchanges, that's a deadly trap. Then you have, have them controlling the money in and out if they're partners. You know what I mean? So the money that you use to purchase on the exchange comes from the same place that you're buying on the exchange from. So they basically hold all the chips. Now, this hasn't happened yet, but look, this could happen in the future as, you know, things progress. So it is a good thing now. It means that, yes, crypto is doing amazing, but we need to watch this for the future and make sure that um, the wrong people don't, you know, get a hold of whatever. We don't know what could happen. Just there's lots of bad situations that could happen from, you know, entities taking over that we want to get away from. The whole point of crypto is decentralization. I'm going to leave it at that. Next, let's do some prices. Um, internet computer, like he was saying, I wanted to um, touch on this because he said if it went under 30 again, he would buy. But let's see if it's going to dip. Now, you don't want to just, oh, okay, it went right under 30 to 29.88. That doesn't mean to just buy right away. That means let's actually go down here. Let's look at the seven day. All right. Well, look at the seven day. We can do that. But let's look at trading view. And let's actually go to the 30 minute. So the 30 minute actually has a nice head and shoulders pattern right now or inverse head and shoulders. Okay. And we need to break out. And we also have, it looks like an ascending wedge on here as well. So let's do the ascending wedge first. And this is good because this is a continuation pattern. Now, it does look like we might break to the downside of this, and I hope not, but because the upside is right there, and we'd have to break all the way to the up. So hopefully we can. Um, even if it breaks down here, I wouldn't say that this broke out until probably 2972. If it breaks down below, well, 2977. So if it breaks down below 2977, then it's a possible breakdown out of this. And then if it breaks above 30.30, then, well, no, I would say probably about 30.5. So give it about the same amount of area. 30, about 0.23. So 30.30, .30, so it would be 30.53. Uh, so right about right there. And if it broke out of that, as you can see, this is like an area of resistance before too, back here, before we actually went down. So this is a crucial area that we're at right here before, you know, the original breakdown. Um, and also the inverse head and shoulders. I like this. And I think um, we could break out. This is the head. This is the shoulder. And... Hmm... Well, I mean, here, this one actually broke out already. There was one right here with this the shoulder and this the shoulder, but I'm going for an even bigger one. Now, you could say that it's right here, but that's sketchy. Uh, I don't know. Let's see what we got. Yeah, that's just super sketchy. 
that doesn't have a real shoulder over here. I mean, it did maybe right here, but we already broke out of that. See if that was the shoulder, and then we broke out. We already went to the upside. So, but it looks like if we dip a little bit further right here, we might have a shoulder. See this? It might dip right here. So we can just count this whole thing as the shoulder. <laughs> kind of a funky looking shoulder, but they're about the same, you know, level apart or something in here i don't know but um no definitive stuff so we'll need to break out it's about the same level anyway so if we break out above here it could have a nice rise basically but there are no real confirmed patterns right here um if this does go up it will it will create the shoulder though so then it could break out and then confirm the pattern so we'll just have to keep an eye on it. that's all um and then while we're on this i'm going to show you guys about the staking as well um how i'm doing on the staking i just wanted to um give you guys a little bit of update on that it's actually growing every single day and i love that because i didn't know i thought it was just every time i voted um the amount went up and so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna spawn one new neuron just to show you guys how it's done and then I'm going to probably just put that into my staking and compound it. And what compounding is, is basically putting the maturity or the, uh, you know, the, the um, new neuron back into the staking pool. That way you get more rewards for that amount staked. So that's what we're going to show you. I have it pretty well down. The only thing I don't have down and I don't know enough about is the canister um smart contract process and so that's the next thing i'm going to learn about in the staking um pool so man 19 whole bitcoin that's a lot <laughs> but here it is so this is one point where i'm going to show back here um as you see i started out with this amount of icp um plus one so i had 24.52332751 so basically five two three three five two three three remember that five 24.5233 but five two three three is the number afterwards then we go in here how much do i have here i only put a little tiny bit in there but you can see it grew 24.52560 instead of five two three three remember so it grew the amount i barely put any of this maturity in it very 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 that's why it didn't really grow i mean i put very very small amounts when it was still a lot i put like five percent when it was a lot less than that like a lot less than that so and this look how much it's grown since the last time you saw it and when that gets high enough, I can spawn this new neuron and it will mint me brand new, newly minted, fresh out the oven ICP tokens. I cannot wait to smell those chocolate chip ICP tokens. International chocolate chip cookies. Is that what it stands for? International chocolate chip. <laughs> uh, but fresh out the oven. Can't wait to see what they do it might mess up my neuron though that's the only thing but it's only a six month one so i've heard if you do it then you lose voting power if you stake a new neuron or you can just merge the maturity like i did before that's how this number rose and i can just um add that that would um translate to icp tokens so i could just add that and then get more of these in here and then the next time it added it just keep adding and the more that i put in here the more rewards i gain and then over time over time i keep putting it back in get more get more and it basically compounds compounding your staking or you just um keep spawning new neurons over time i'm probably the one that i spawn um the new neuron with one of these i'm gonna have just to spawn new neurons that way I don't lose my boating power and then I'll have one just good for boating. So I might just leave like one ICP token in a neuron to spawn new neurons with it. Maybe I could um, send the maturity over there once I get it all. I don't know if I can do that. Maybe send my maturity to a different neuron and then have that spawn the new neuron. That way I don't lose my boating power. I don't know. 
we'll have to see in the future. So that'll be cool. So we're getting more in-depth stuff now with ICP. So if you guys have any questions on the process, feel free to reach out and ask me. We're going to just follow my progress and follow your progress too. If you um, want to let us know in the comments below, smash that like button if you haven't already. And please consider subscribing to the channel and sharing this with your friends um, that like staking because this is probably the only channel that's talking about ICP staking right now, at least that I know of. So um, I will go over the whole process. Every time I vote, I like to share it with you guys. Let's check if there's a new vote today. So this is the voting app or tab, I mean. Um, and so you just vote there and you get more maturity, which is ICP tokens for voting too. So you get it for holding, for voting, and then every day. Um, so then you have all these upgrades that have been executed. But what you do is you go in here to proposal status to see the open ones, and then you press on it. And then what you do is you just get rid of rejected, uh, adopted and executed, just leave open and then get out of there. So you can just see all the open ones. And as you see, there's none right now. It says load more proposals. That means there's no um, proposal to vote on right now to earn tokens, which is there's only been two this week since I've been staking, which is fine. I've still gained quite a bit of maturity. But when you um, vote, it's like you get double maturity that day. So if you're going to get like point. 0 0.07 or whatever, you'll get 0.14 instead that day because you get double. You know, we get 0 0.707 for voting and then 0 0.07 for holding. You basically kind of get, I don't know if it's the same amount, but you do get um, some for both. You would have to see if it's the same for yourself, however many you're holding. Because how that that's different too, however much you're holding and for how long. So I'm only holding mine on this one for now for the next 182 days and seven hours to get the maximum benefit out of it you need to hold it for eight years and basically you can't take it out for eight years but the amount you could spawn new neuron after new neuron and get tons of new icp mint tokens so if you put like ten thousand in for eight years and you end up making like 10 grand a year off of it that could be a, a worthwhile investment and something I'm looking into to see if I can do something like that. Like if I put a certain amount, like 10 or 20,000, can I make that like every year back? And then that way my 20 grand that I'll get in eight years, I make that tenfold. So those are the things we're going to learn on channel. Subscribe if you want to know about that. I know I do. So, <laughs> uh, so let's go on and next let's move on to some more news next this is cool and it still is on the ic um you know uh what do you call it trajectory that we were on um so basically the artist behind board ape yacht club is gonna unveil a new nft um collection at the art basil and guess why this is cool because not only is it on ethereum but they are also collaborating with one of our favorite and what we were just talking about crypto internet computer ic so it's going to be on the ic um seneca the lead artist behind board ape yacht club uh bay c one of the most celebrated nft projects will be debuting five nfts on saturday at art basil in miami so Miami is like the central hub for everything crypto. And I really want to go. I think I'm going to go very soon. Um, yeah, especially if there's something going on. I think there's there's a bunch of people in Miami right now. I don't know. I might have to see what's going on down there. And if you guys want to meet me in Miami, then um, let's go kick it in Miami, dude, for real. Um, Four will likely be sold at auction at the Iconoclast art exhibit. Um, the fifth uh, board, op, board Ape Yacht Club related piece will go up for auction next year, the artist told the Defiant. Okay. But where does it say that it's collaborating with IC? Well, right here. The NFTs will be minted on Ethereum, but hosted on the internet computer. Now, Tell me that that is isn't boss of internet computer and that this does not mean they're going to have a huge future, that they partnered with Ethereum on this. What kind of boss level negotiating skills do these people have to get 
the Ethereum people to agree to that. Like, whoa, dude. I mean, what kind of magic did you use? <laughs> but um, I don't know. They did a good job. They have a really good team, and it doesn't surprise me. So a blockchain built for and developed by the Definity Foundation. These guys are amazing. I love that project. In theory, because the NFTs will be 100% on chain, they can't be taken down as they can when hosted on centralized servers like Amazon Web Services. Oh, and um, if you didn't know, um, and if any of the Finney team is watching right now and you didn't know before, look at this. This is what I will do for all of my videos. Every single live stream, I will have your logo, Definity ICP, if you give us that grant. So more stuff and we'll put you in the description we'll have all your links in every description of every video we will make it we'll basically build a gigantic internet computer uh internet computer community say that 10 times fast internet computer community 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 internet computer but anyway so um yeah, so I guess they will be 100% on chain. They can be taken down as they can when hosted on centralized servers like Amazon Web Services. That is super cool. I had to read that again because that is super cool. <laughs> Anybody hit the uh, the replay button? <laughs> Seneca had has frustrations with the traditional art market, a world which has up to now treated digital art as a second class relative. Well, guess what? We ain't second class relatives no more. I'm not in the digital art, but uh, I kind of speak to that as the whole cryptocurrency community um, because basically the community, I looked at it over the last 10 years and it has been highly scrutinized. So all of you early adopters, man, that's my way of, you know, get my respect for real respect. Uh, what can I say? I, I'm a late adopter. I thought it was stupid, but I, that's because I didn't know what I was talking about. I, that's because I didn't research it. Now, that was dumb of me. Instead of it being stupid, I was actually the stupid one for not doing research before I actually made a comment about it because I thought it was just some stupid internet funny money, honestly, but. Little did I know it might change my life years down the road, right? So I hope you guys are having a good night. Um, I try to make my live streams as bright as possible. I want to interact with you guys better. How can I do that? Uh, I'd like some ideas on how to interact with my audience better. Um, what do you guys think that I could do to maybe include you guys more or maybe ignore you less because <laughs> I kind of feel like I ignore you, but then I look at the, the comments and it just, it's so overwhelming. <laughs> There's so many of them. <laughs> no, but that's a good thing. Thank you for all that. Um, I just don't know where to start sometimes. So, and then I, I want to get in the, the comments, but then I don't want to leave the um, video high and dry either. So it's just kind of a balance, right? Um, some people do it at the very end, but I, I feel if I wait till the very end, then, um, most people will leave. So let's at least, um, go through this again right now. And then we will look at the graph price. Um, I think that's basically all the news cause we kind of did most of the news. Oh wait, we might have one more piece of news and then, um, Algorand. And I think, um, we'll do one more final Q and a, and you guys can ask me questions. I'll really come and maybe tell me a crypto you want me to look at if it's in the top 100 or whatever top 200 so oh yeah it's almost 2022 huh yeah thanks for pointing that out i hope you guys had a good year i hope it was profitable for you but um for the most i hope you made a lot of good relationships in 2021 because that's that's what's the best part of life is good relationships and i know for me this has been my best year um because i reconnected with my daughter and 
that was 16 years in the making, 16 years of misery and suffering. Uh, but no, not really. I mean, I don't want my daughter to ever, you know, hear that and feel bad because it's not like her fault or anything. It's just life dealt me a bad hand and things went bad, but God reconciled it. And this year I got to see my daughter and be in her life again after years and years apart. So I hope you had good relationships this year. If you're mad at somebody, if you haven't seen someone in a long time, forgive them, forget, recontact, rekindle, do whatever. You know, family is one, you know, family is everything. If it's, you know, a friend you haven't talked to, a best friend, you know, reach out to them. Just, you know, it's all about relationships. And um, all right. That's all I wanted to say about that, because it's been a good year for me with with relationships. So, um, you know, I, I've been a lot in my work lately and um, I try not to let it affect my relationships with people. But, you know, working a lot can do that. So um, I just want to thank all of my people if they're watching this. You know, I love you all and um, all my uh, inner counsel too. you guys are awesome. But my family, I love my family, too. I know they watch my videos sometimes, so they might be watching right now. You know. Um, but all of you, I, I thank you for just, you know, standing behind me. And I just hope you have a good end of the year. Spend it with your family and your loved ones. I know it's a little bit different probably in each country that's watching this. So whatever holiday that you're celebrating, spend it with people that you care about. Uh, don't worry as much about the money. You know, just um, I guarantee they'd rather be with you than have some cash flow. So crypto is that way the great equalizer <laughs> it will be i mean it is and so many poor people are changing their lives right now it looks like the whole city is dark out my window i'm like is there a blackout but it's just fog deep deep fog i almost really had to look closer i'm like is that a blackout no we're good we're good to go um let's see what else do we got here Yeah, I just actually reached out to uh, Definity yesterday. That's the first time I reached out to them because I'm pretty persistent. I know I have a lot to offer them. I know our community has a lot to offer them. And I know that we will work hard um, and deliver what we promise and even more. So I can't wait um, to start doing ads for my ICP videos. Um, you know, I'm not going to use all of uh, my videos for ads, just like the ICP ones, you know, and um, we'll see. Um, there, there, This is just the beginning, guys. My channel is just starting out. So I think we're going to get probably lots of sponsors over the time. But this is the main one that I want to concentrate on um, because I want to partner with. I like them. Like even before they started partnering with Ethereum, even, even before this, you know, um, Definity thing that I saw, you know, I, I really cared about that for that project and i i knew that it was going to be the future so let's look at the graph because everybody has been saying that the graph is about over that this is it like um it says abe and the graph are out and uniswap is out and web3 is in which web3 is in but that doesn't mean uh that these are out and i think it was just talking about the coin desk 20 but still um it hurt the graph worse than others got hurt. So I bought it actually 88 cents. I'm not going to lie. And then I bought again down here at like, I think 82. And then I just bought it 66 again because I had to, <laughs> I had to equalize. So I got back in at 66. We're at 70 now. Um, I think my break in price, break even price is right around 78 now. So I'm not doing too bad. It might even be higher than that. I don't know. Um, but I might keep dollar cost averaging in and just getting in all sorts of different kinds of prices on the graph until we, um, I think we're going to at least hit over a buck again, you know, just because they say that it, you know, isn't the top 20 anymore. doesn't mean nothing to me. Um, I mean, it does, it has an effect, you know, it's no longer like a top 10 crypto in popularity on Coinbase either. It's actually dropped to number 30. Now, most are by market rank and market cap not by popularity. So that's the one thing Coinbase has different. They're like, yeah, but this one's super popular, which means a ton of people are buying it right now. And that means not a ton of people are buying it. But look at the market cap. We're still over 3 billion. All right, let's look at the volume. Uh, where is it? Oh, 
still over 175 million. Now, if we were in like the $20 million range to like 10 to 30 million, then I might worry a little bit. Then I might say, okay, yeah, the graph I think is done, you know, because that's low, low levels for a crypto like this. If it was like running 20, 30 mil, I would probably not invest in it anymore. But look at all that volume. That's $175 million in 24 hours. You know, the first three days that this project was alive, it made 750 million trading volume. So that was 250 million a day, basically. So yeah, and it's still holding its own all the way from back here. So I don't think it's done yet. I really think that we have a nice recovery happening and, you know, the continuation of the bull market. This was just the final fake out shakeout before the real breakout. So you could say that we have kind of this falling, what you want to call it? Falling Wedrus, Wedrosaurus. Falling Wedger. Falling Wedger. So that would be a weird little breakout, huh? And that's why I don't like these ones because look at how far it dipped below the line here. So these are super hard to do in my opinion. Um, you could even come back all the way to here though. I mean, it depends on how long you want to look for the timeline. Now this one actually makes it look really bad like a almost a <laughs> descending triangle and those are those are kind of bearish but it's at an angle so i'd like to know that guys if a, a descending triangle has an angled bottom it's not a descending triangle right it has to have a flat bottom if i'm correct that's i'm pretty sure that's the rule it has to be flat all the way across. It can't come at an angle because then that's what that would make it a, a falling wedge, not a, a falling a descending triangle. So I don't know. But yeah, this is just a weird little pattern. I don't think that is anything right there. But let's see. Do we have any kind of head and shoulders pattern? Actually, we could have a huge one. Look at that. What if this was the head? <laughs> let's look at that. <laughs> We could have a giant inverse head and shoulders right here. If this is the head right here, this is the shoulder. Oh, imagine how big, we'd have to like go up right here. It'd have to go up like this. And then we'd have to go kind of like staircase up sideways like this. And then we'd have to have like a drop like that. And then kind of like the same thing we have here. And then and then we'd have a shoulder right there. See that? And then boom. And then what we'd do is we would need to go like this, right? Cha. And break out of this line. If we broke out this, then it goes all the way from. There to there. See that? Fun stuff. All the way to a dollar thirty-five, baby. So let's hope it does follow that. Let's see if it goes up to about eighty-eight, or it, yeah, about that. So and then it goes sideways right here, about to a dollar, and then we retract to about eighty-eight again, which would actually, you know, not be too far fetched, right? Because that would be a level of support. Look at all that support there. So this isn't too far fetched. And then boom, and then if we break out of a dollar again, we get to go all the way to the moon, baby. But that would be cool, right? That's just a, a made-up scenario, though. Um, that's my guess on what could happen. Now, it looks more like a falling wedge, and if we can get a nice breakout, that would be cool. Um, you could even go back to right jaw and do it. But, yeah, it looks like we definitely had a head and shoulders pattern that broke to the downside here. If you want to see uh, what happened to cause us to dump, you can kind of look right here. See this? There's the head. There's a shoulder, here's the shoulder, and then we have the neckline breakout. I think we looked at this before, didn't we? And then we had this like neckline breakout right about, yeah. Actually, it'd be right there. 
And then let's see how far it goes. It would go from right here to here. And then we break down. Let's see, where is the line? Hold on. Um, the line's right here, huh? Okay. Okay. Hold on. Hold on. Pretty close. Pretty close, right? <laughs> so it says it went down to 61. Isn't that what it did go down to? 61. It says 60 right here. Look at that. So that is a pretty accurate target right there. So if we can get this to go up, we will have an accurate price target on the way up to about $1.35, it said. So let's hope that scenario plays out. We got to watch the market, of course. We're a long way off from that. But um, I mean, we could look at the hour even a little bit closer in and... Okay. Okay, then we have a falling wedge here and we might break out. That actually looks pretty good. Looks pretty good to me if we break out. I mean, it looks like we tried to break out right here and then got rejected. So, and then we tried again, got rejected. So we're trying again. <laughs> and if we can kind of break out above this point, above, what is it, 72? I mean, I don't see why we have to go that high, but yeah, about 72, I guess, is the breakout point somewhere around there. So, cool, cool. Now, last piece of news. Ethereum gets another upgrade. Oh, my God. I did it again, dude. What the frick? Ethereum gets another upgrade. What you need to know about Aero Glacier. At least it was only one graph. Now, I just feel stupid. Let's go back here. I'll show you the descending triangle because you can't see it in that little thing there. <laughs> so it's a descending triangle right here. And now I got to go show you this one too on the daily so I can show you my made up thing here. Um, as you see the head and shoulders pattern right here um, broke down to the downside and the price target basically went almost all the way down to it as you see right here. And then if we get this to follow this pattern up and then we get another inverse head and shoulders right here and we break out here, we go all the way up to $1.35. So there's that. All right, now let's go to this news. Sorry about that. I'm glad it was only for a quick minute though um, on the video. So Ethereum gets another upgrade, what you need to know about Aero Glacier. So Aero Glacier could delay the difficulty until after Ethereum 2.0 is launched. So just a few months ago, Ethereum developers were asking users to update their nodes, the devices that run the network software, and typically store a mutable ledger of transactions. They're at it again, this time to delay what's known as the whatever. I can't say that. A periodic task that will become obsolete after Ethereum 2.0 takes full effect and the network transitions to a proof-of-stake consensus model that does away with crypto mining. That is what we want in Ethereum 2.0, um, for sure, for sure, for sure. Um, and so that is good for the you know future, but they're trying to delay it. Um, a periodic test that will become obsolete after it. Okay. So what? what Okay. Unlike the London hard fork, which changed the Ethereum fee structure and introduced a deflationary pressure to the network, the Aero Glacier upgrade slated for this week is nowhere near as drastic. In fact, it isn't even as adventure packed as whatever that is. Um, the October all upgrade that prepped the beacon chain, the starting point for the Ethereum switch, the proof of stake for prime time. So... <clears throat> It could become less usable. Um, yeah, we're just not going to be in here. There's just too many trigger words in here. <laughs> uh, but finally, let's look at Algorand. Now, guys, I 
luckily bought in at like a dollar eighty five and then a dollar seventy eight and then like a dollar fifty or something or I don't know they're just a bunch of different low prices and then it went back up um, to a dollar eighty seven over here and I sold it like a dollar eighty five point five or something almost but I was it was like a dollar eighty seven I did it but yeah it took a couple pennies off of my sale but anyway I sold it at the very top the very that's the first time I've ever got the very top um, but I did get the very top and then I am waiting I wish I would have stayed up until three in the morning because look at this if I would have just waited it went right down to 161 which is 24 cents uh, lower than what I just sold it at like hours before so I was hoping to buy it again down here, but I didn't wake up in time. So, and we're already back up here into the one seventies again. So it's only nine cents below my sell price now. So, or 10 cents or something like that. So, uh, but let's look at the trading view. Is there any good patterns for Algorand? I bet there is. Um, looks like, nope, nope, nope. Uh, inverse, hold on. Ooh, ooh, dude, dude. Tell me, is this an inverse head and shoulders pattern? Let's looky, looky. Is this lower than that one? Do you see a head maybe? And a shoulder? And a shoulder? I do. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Look at that. Inverse head and shoulders pattern, baby. Now let's look. What do we got? Yeah. Okay. Um, where do we need to break out of? Right here? Or up here? No, it's got to be kind of right here, right? Yep. It's got to touch both of those. So right there, that's where it would be. And if we break out, it's not going to go too high because it's not that big of a, a head. So there we go to that. And then if we break out, we go all the way to a dollar ninety. Wait, what is that? Two oh two. We go to two oh two if it breaks out. Yeah. Let's do it. Let's make lots of money. All right. Now, I think that's about everything. Oh, I did want to show you this because I was talking about this. Remember when I was like saying the other day something about Altcoin Daily was talking about the rich and the poor? Well, I guess he really wasn't. He was actually, this is what he said. Is the cryptocurrency market being manipulated? Well, this is what I said. Just like the stock market, the rich have enough money to move the market, while the poor can only ride the waves up and down, as you guys have heard me say many, many, many times. So that's pretty cool. If you want to see this, just go over to Altcoin Daily and then go into his community tab. And then this will be right here in the community tab of his thing. And then you can vote on this and uh, vote on mine if you want, you know, upvote it. Let him know. Let these guys know that I'm a force to be reckoned with in the uh, crypto YouTuber field, that I'm here to stay, that I'm going to become big and maybe um, that'd be cool to be on one of their shows. I look up to all these guys. So maybe one day I will be um, in their inner group i don't know i don't know what what it is i know i'm not rich so i don't know if that disqualifies me but uh, maybe one day i'll be rich <laughs> so uh i know a lot of the people weren't rich before crypto so crypto makes a lot of people rich that's the cool thing so shout out to all those guys good job bitboy crypto Good job, Altcoin Daily, all those guys that spread the word of crypto. I really appreciate it. Um, Cryptos are us. Who else? Uh, the Moon, <clears throat> Da Vinci, all you guys, man. Ivan on tech, great guy. Uh, he's really smart. He knows all the technical stuff. Um, and just all of my inner council, all of my subscribers, look at internet computer price under 30 cents um, with a nice inverse head and shoulders looking like it could possibly break out. I'd like to see an even you know, deeper shoulder than this, but um, I mean, yeah, just I guess that is a shoulder, but <laughs> anyway, 
Um, I hope you guys are having a good night. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Crypto Dakota with Jeff. And then we talked about all these cryptos, Algorand, ICB, Graph, and Bitcoin. And I believe this is a, a legit market recovery, but just because I believe it doesn't mean that I'm telling you to believe it. Um, what we need to do is watch the market and um, decide for ourselves. Every one of us has a decision to make. Is this the end of the market for you? End of the market for me? And is this the end of the market for the actual cryptocurrency? And those all could be different things. That's the thing. So whatever it means to you, I just don't think that we're going below 40,000 right now. I think we're going to continue. We're going to have maybe um, a top somewhere around Christmas or New Year's. And then I think maybe even into January and the first part of February, we're going to see crypto still going. And then I think possibly mid-February is when we're going to start to see the dump just to fake people out, make them think that the dump isn't going to happen. And then the dump happens. So I'm just saying February, I'm really going to re evaluate my whole crypto thing and maybe take my altcoins off the table just in case. Now, you guys are awesome. Thanks for joining me. Let's get to some questions before we get rid of um, the live stream and have no more way to talk to each other. <laughs> I have no clue what I was going to say, so that's why <laughs> get rid of the uh, live stream or whatever, dude. <laughs> uh, I, I need someone here with me, like, you know, that knows, like, that has ideas too, man. I don't have anyone to bounce. I mean, I have my inner counsel. That's why I love having them. It would be good to have one of you here in real life so I could bounce my ideas off of you. You know what I mean? That's the thing. Like just thinking, I think out loud sometimes, but I come up with my best ideas when people push me. Like they're like, no, that's not good enough. No, that won't work. And I'm like, oh, well. <laughs> and then I do my best work. So um, thank you guys for pushing me. Thank you for continuing watching the channel. I will have amazing new market updates for you every single day. Um, we make money in crypto all the time. Um, with strategies that have been proven to work over and over and over and over again. And as long as you do your research, you buy the dips, you dollar cost average, you mitigate your risk, you mitigate your loss, and you know, you just active in the community and stay with your nose to the news, to the TA, all of that. I know it sounds like a lot, but you will be successful. So enough of the preaching to you about it, but you know what to do. Um, <clears throat> Ship take off soon. Okay. Um, I hope so. For you, for your guys' sake, I hope Shiba Inu does take off soon. Am I going to invest in Shiba Inu right this very second? No. If I was going to invest in Shiba Inu, I would wait for a bear market before I will ever touch Shiba Inu. I will not buy it at these giant prices. Um, even if it does eat another zero or two, the risk of it going down <clears throat> is too great. Uh, compared to the chance of it eating another zero or two. You know what I mean? So bull market it is. Um, but other than that, you can if you want. If you think it's a long-term hold and you're holding it for a while until you're dedicated, you're not going to sell it until after it goes above the price that you buy it in at, I'm not going to stop you. <laughs> so good luck. That's all I'm going to say. Good luck. I hope you win. You know, I, genuinely, I really hope you win. And um, I hope it goes above that price. Am I going to buy in with my money? No. Algorand at $1.61? Yeah. At least until January, like mid-January, right? Then we can start like thinking, oh, yeah, seriously, if you have a big altcoin position, start thinking about after this next bull market, you might want to consider uh, stable coins just for a while, maybe a month or two. What is the worst that could happen? You So say it pumps and you're in stable coins. Okay, you missed out on one pump that is out of a million pumps that happened in crypto. But what if it dumps 95% and you lose 95% of your money? That's what I'm saying. I'd rather miss out on a dip than lose 95% of my money. That's the only reason I'm saying that. And that's why I'm going to get out in uh, probably early February. Um, I don't want to miss the big pump, but they could try to fake us out. So let's just not let them. Let's make it end in February, <laughs> right? Let's just sell it off in February and be like, okay, we're making it end in February. We're going into a bear market. I don't care what you say. <laughs> I mean, we could do it if enough of us got together and said, we're making a bear market. You guys aren't changing it. 
You know, you're not catching us off guard. Let's everybody sell all of our altcoins into a stable coin. We're not leaving crypto. We believe in crypto, but we're also not going to lose 95% of our money because we know better. Who imagine what that would do to the crypto market. That was actually kind of cool, man. That'd be cool if we did that. But, you know, I, I'd want everybody to not lose that money. Imagine, I just couldn't imagine one of you coming on my channel and be like, you know, Jeff, I didn't listen or uh, I was on vacation or anything. I lost 95% of my money. Dude, like, I don't want to hear that. Like, no, I do. If you, if I mean, you can let me know if you did lose that much money. But, man, I just, it's hard to hear. So that's why I'm saying, man, I'm just putting it in a stable coin. Let's make the bear market in February. That way it doesn't catch us off guard like this dump did. This was a man manipulated dump. Why don't we manually dump it in February? We all come together. We get a Reddit group called February Dump Day. And on February 1st, everybody at the same time sell all your altcoins for like DiCoin, USDT, uh, USDC, whatever uh, cryptos. And I guarantee it, crypto will go down and then it will be a forced bear market. <laughs> I mean, hey, you never know. A trigger the massive nose. What do I think triggered it? I think institutional adoption of Bitcoin. I think whenever they want. And I think also countries that want to buy at a dip as well. I think big money is going into Bitcoin. And I think they know how to dump it. And they don't do it very often. And also when the market is overflowed. I think there's a combination of things that happen. Um, when Bitcoin gets to a certain level and a certain set of people know it and have the money to move around when those happen to cause these massive dumps. So when they're manipulated, I think it's um, a certain thing that they use a lot of money to dump. Um, only when the market sentiment gets to a certain level, though, and I think they're really good at knowing when the market is going to be at that level so that they can dump um, Bitcoin that much but not actually trigger a bear market. That is, it's it's risky to dump Bitcoin that much in a bull market because it could cause an artificial bear market in the middle of a bull market like what happened. And that's why I think maybe it will get prolonged, but we've had big corrections in the past before. So um, let me see. People are not going to unload on the festive season, especially this year. Um, crypto. No, I see what you're saying. And I see why you would think. Um, and normally that would be true, John. He's saying um, the festive season, you know, the, the holidays, people are selling, you know, probably to buy gifts, right? That would be true in almost any other year. Why is that not true now? Because people are giving crypto as gifts. They aren't selling their crypto to buy gifts for people. They're giving crypto as gifts. So that's the only reason that I don't think people are unloading for the holiday season. I think it was big money that moved it down. And then the smart people like uh, uh, Naya Bukele bought another 120 Bitcoin. And the people like me, I didn't have enough money. And then I found some money. I did dig up some money for the dip. And I did buy a little more graph at 66 cents. So I did find some money to buy the dip. Thank goodness. <laughs> Because it was that maybe that's why I'm in such a good mood because I found money to buy the dip, not very much, but enough to um, kind of offset my cost. <laughs> yeah, it does sound like the GameStop thing, right? Let's all if we can get enough people to do it all at once. I'm telling you, we could cause an artificial bear market, or we could basically uh, bring an end to the bull market if enough of us did it, like a million of us all sold our um, altcoins at the same time. Oh, yeah, that would have such a domino effect. And then other people would start doing it because they saw us. And then more people would because they saw the price dropping. And then when they officially knew it was a bear market that we started, oh, then the waves would come and then it would be over. And then we could buy back in with our stable coins <laughs> way lower. I'm serious. That It's going to happen. Why not control it? They do. I mean, the power is in the people. Let's do it with Dogecoin or something. I'm serious, man. Let's. Let's do something. Let's sell all. Let's buy a bunch of Dogecoin right now and sell it. <laughs> oh, 
That's that's good information. Thank you for sharing that. Uh, he says the history shows when the market crashed towards the end of the year, the beginning of the year starts with a big, big, big uh, blast off for the market. So a big uptrend. That's that's pretty good to know. I think I believe that too. <laughs> I buy three dips, Tostitos, bread. <laughs> Oh, nice. Yeah, we can take the power, especially when it should end in February anyway. You know, we should want it to end in February because then we know, right? We can kind of control our own future if we come together because what you wanted to end sometime like March 8th or April 16th on some random day or how it's been every four years in the past. So it's up to you guys. It's up to us as a whole. It's not up to me. I can come up with the idea, but there has to be a group of people that do it. You know what I mean? So, all right, guys, that being said, you know what time it is? Goodbye and good Bitcoin. Bet!